Well, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the middle of nowhere and welcome to an update video on my MESS 50 bike. Um, to get started, there are a couple of things I want to discuss in this video. First, I want to tell you about the new engine that I installed. I have to do some preventative maintenance. Uh, also, I want to show you a couple of accessories that I installed. And as a fourth point, I want to discuss the build quality of this bike. Mine is now five years old. The just did over 23,000 kilometers and there are some things that are showing its build quality and its age. Um, as you may know, MESS is engineered in France, built in China, and yet there is a cliche about Chinese quality. Um, that's partially true, which I want to show, but I also want to show what you can do to keep um, your bike long time and keep it up and running without any problems for a long time. Anyway, let's get started. Um, I will include chapters in this video so you can uh, skip ahead if you like. And uh, before you do so, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks! So this is the current uh, odometer rating, 22,000 and almost 900 kilometers. In reality, this is a bit higher because the speedometer drive didn't work for a couple of weeks. So we can safely add a thousand kilometers to this. Um, so it means that the new Leafon engine that I recently installed, I leave the link in the card up in screen. Um, yeah, well, has been behaving well. I'm really happy with the way this engine performs. Yes, it's not a powerful engine, and nor is this a fast bike. It will never be with 49cc in a small motorcycle frame, but it has been behaving well. Um, let's go ahead to the other side. So there's a sticker here with some advice on the run-in period, and it says to replace the oil and clean the oil filter screen, which lives behind there just below the pickup of the oil pump and that's what I did. The only thing I did it after 200 kilometers because the brake and oil is really thin so I took the clutch cover off, I drained the oil, checked everything, there was some debris in the oil screen and now I have new oil in there. I'll put the brand and specification in screen and talking about specification the important thing is that the oil is JASO-MA compliant. That means that the oil is suitable for wet clutches and gearboxes, transmissions that share the same oil as the engine does. Um, the only complaint that I have which isn't really a complaint that comes with these engines is the gear shift from first to second gear. It always is a bit harsh and jerky. Sometimes you really have to put force on the shift pedal in order to make the gear shift. There is often a big clunk. But that's just the way these engines are constructed and the shifts from second to third to fourth gear back and forth are just smooth and all. Yeah, engine has been running fine and it's much, much quieter than the old engine was. Um, in hindsight, hindsight is 2020, we can really say that the old engine was worn out after 20,000 kilometers. That's just the way it is. And that also says something about the quality of these things. I've driven a Honda bike for over 20 years and I rebuilt the engine once uh, when I restored it. I did 75,000 kilometers with that engine and in basis that's the exact same engine and that never engine has never been a part. So uh, yeah, anyway I'm happy with the way the engine runs. Um, it's all been smooth sailing so far. Now I want to continue with the quality of the bike. Um, because I always been very careful in maintenance and driving the bike and keeping it clean. I mean, I think it still looks pretty darn good for a five-year-old bike with, well, I'll say 25,000 kilometers on it, but there are some quality issues. Um, as said, the speedometer drive has been broken and I thought it was the speedometer cable, so I ordered a new cable. And the dealer asked me, are you sure it's not a speedometer drive, which is this unit over here. And I said, nah, I was pretty sure that I saw the top end that goes in the speedometer itself right there, sorry, right there, was broken. But when I installed a new cable, the thing didn't do anything. So I took the speedometer drive out. Yeah, and that was broken uh, due to pretty poor quality. Um, I took it apart and the drive on the inside, which I'll show you in a moment, um, was completely gone, was completely worn. So I ordered a new drive, picked it up at a dealer and the dealer said, 
before you install it make sure there's grease in there because oftentimes uh, they forget it in the mesh factory anyway uh, so I took this apart before I installed it what you do is you get uh, the drive pin out you can can screw it out and there was some grease in there but not nearly enough so I put uh, grease in there put everything back together and I had a working speedometer the only thing is I had a front wheel lifted up a jack on the engine and when I rotated the wheel I heard the bearings and yeah so that was the next thing that was kaput and that was pretty bad um, the bearings in here are supposed to be two RS bearings um, I'll show you the specifications in screen and the pictures I took but anyway uh, the, that designation 2RS means that bearings are sealed on both sides and have lifetime lubrication so you never need to lubricate the bearings but when I tapped out the, uh, the worn bearings um, there was only a seal on one side of the bearing so yeah that's I would say uh, I would not call it Chinese fraud but in effect it is there were only seals on the outside and the bearings the both bearings uh, were completely worn out so I installed new bearings and when I did that I created a new problem because I measured the thickness of the disc brake the brake disc and there is a little lip over here you can hear it when I go with nails in there and I just last winter had installed new brake pads and when I took the wheel out I chipped a part off of the brake pads so I need to replace that and also I ordered a new uh, disc which I'm going to install in this episode and at the same time I will take the rear wheel out those bearings out too because I don't trust them anymore I have bought SKF bearings I have installed SKF bearings in the front going to do the same in the back and so. the last thing I want to talk about is the quality I touched upon that when I discussed the bearings which are real real crappy quality uh, I would recommend if you get one of these bikes and you want to keep it long term one of the first things you're going to do is remove the bearings and install quality bearings uh, especially when the front wheel bearings wear out that can lead to dangerous situations that's just the way it is other than that yeah as I said the bike looks pretty nice and clean I've always been very precise in cleaning it and, and polishing it and well everything as you can see I like to keep my chain clean and shiny well lubricated but yeah um, paint quality is showing in some points like over here at the rear indicator bracket there is rust and I'm not going to address that in this episode um, that's something I want to plan in winter because paint always takes time to do correct and to dry and with this kind of weather I'd rather be driving than painting my bike so I postpone that to the winter time I'm gonna take off this cover for a brief moment so here we have the air box now well it's greasy because of uh, well the blown head gasket right before I replaced the engine but yeah the quality of these plastics isn't all too great you can see this pin is tacked on that holds this point in place so yeah there are a lot of things that need improvement and over the years mesh has been improving their quality but they're still not on par with any Japanese manufacturer that's the way it is and you get what you pay for in a way but I've been driving an old Honda that I restored in 2001 which was already uh, 25 years old back then and I have hold on to that for 20 years the quality of Hondas back in the 1970s was just impressive especially when you compare it to this but yeah that's part of the hobby of having one of these bikes is to work on it and make small improvements now last week I saw this over here where this cover rubs into the frame starts to wear off that's something I need to address and other than that yeah the quality of the chrome as you can see there's a bracket in here and they did some primer on there but not on the inside there's a little bit of rust and like these food packs there is a little ball bearing in here that makes it click in place that starts to rust all of those things you wouldn't have with a Honda it's something that you would get with a Chinese bike yeah and I see that as part of the hobby to perform maintenance and make those small improvements like adding the accessories I also added this clock which is a very nice quality it's watertight and here is my voltmeter and there is a small temp temperature gauge 
<laughs> this also is Chinese so you have to add 4 degrees to get the actual temperature. Nice thing is it has a USB port so I can charge my camera while driving. Oh yeah, and this oil temperature gauge comes in real handy. Normal driving speeds, oil temperature is 70 to 80 degrees and real warm days when I drive real fast without any wind, it gets up to 90 degrees. So there's that. Okay, now on to the accessories. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail on how I did it because um, yeah, it take a lot of time, but I installed those driving lights. They're currently set at yellow. I ordered them from uh, well Amazon or eBay. I'm not exactly sure. But these are LED driving lights, and they are two colored. I incorporated a small switch over here. I flick this switch. All of a sudden, I have real white, real bright riding lights. They are too bright, and also. They are rated for, I believe, 14 volt at max. But I ordered a couple of buck converters. Here it is. It's in this plastic case, I'll show you. But it has a 12 volt power supply coming in. And with this set screw over there, you can adjust it. And they currently run on 9 volts. That's bright enough. Otherwise, they are too bright and too blinding, uh, even by day and especially at night. And when I use the white lights, they work like a kind of high beams and they blind everything. Don't use them. And the other thing that I installed is this COSO tachometer slash hour meter. Um, it runs on 12 volt. It's a three wire system. Sorry, it's a three wire system. Um, a positive switched over the ignition ground that I did on the engine near to the power supply and there's a pickup wire which was a bit tricky to install to get the right signal but that wraps around the spark plug cap over here it's recommended to test a couple of things I the coil is up here just below the tank I'm not sure if we can see it probably not but it's over there installed it at a coil at the spark plug lead that didn't work it lost signal above um, 5000 rpm and normally normal driving speed it runs at 7000 to 8000 rpm and now I have it wrapped around the spark plug cap and that gives me a nice and clean signal oh I can show you hold on for a second so currently the bike is idling oh it's very bright I hope there's not too much glare but normal idle is around 1500 to 1700 rpm and have a nice fairly stable uh, signal engine always fluctuates and you have to so we're gonna switch it off you have to adjust it for lost spark ignition lost spark in a single cylinder means that every revolution of the crankshaft so even at the end of the exhaust stroke there is a spark um, so it sparks like a two-stroke engine which is fairly common for these engines so there's that oh yeah so enough jibber jabber uh, let's start and Let's start by installing a new disc brake. I'm going to head home and I'm going to do the work in my backyard. So I put it up on a, in the jack so it doesn't fall forward and land on its forks and damage the paint. Oh, that, don't want that to happen. <laughs> 14, 17 mil. There it is. See if we can get a speedometer drive out. And there we are. So we can unbolt the brake disc and install the new one. There are some securing lips around here. So I'm gonna tap that back with a drift. So here's my trusty Tempo torque wrench, it's a quarter inch drive. I'm gonna first determine the breakout torque so I can accord, uh, torque this according to spec. Crank it up all the way to, let's say, 22. Yeah, doesn't click at 22, so I'm gonna go with 22 Newton meters for tightening. Take 
take out the old one. While we're at it, give it a good cleaning behind there. Spokes you otherwise can get to. Let's get out a new one. First see if it fits. And luckily it does. There is some protecting oil on here. I'll leave that on there. I'm gonna give it a once over with brake clean once I have everything installed. Oh. Never understood the purpose of those waves in here. If any of you has an answer as to why, please let me know in the comments. Dark it down. First everything hand tied. I think I'll drop the dark to 20. And with a 20 newton meters, yeah, a little bit more. That's the reason I have a one have a flat edge for the securing lip to lock onto. So that's why I rotate it a little bit further. Now well, let's step it back with a drift. And this is what it looks like in close up. I always have one lip on the flat side of a bolt head. Now it's secure. So I'm gonna wipe it off with brake lean and put it aside because we have to take the caliper off and replace the brake pads. I'm gonna remove the brake caliper. So I can find the correct socket which I believe is 12 millimeter yes it is and that's pretty tight reason being I tightened this with my impact <laughs> say it's about 35 newton meters when you install the front wheel in order not to damage the um, the brake pads I thought I damaged them but upon closer inspection um, yeah there are a lot of wear marks and you can see where the lip has created an edge on the uh, on the brake pads too so I'm going to take this apart okay I had to re-record this this is a bit tricky so here I have the outer pad and there is this squeal pad going on that's on the lower uh, eyelet and then we can Put this in, or at least put it on the bracket, so it just kind of floats. And the second thing you need to do is get the inner pad that's pushed on by the brake cylinder. It's this over here. It also has this uh, spring clip on there, and the extensions point toward the outside. I'm gonna slowly turn it around so you can see it's over there on the top. I want to add a little bit of copper grease, just a fingertip on these little parts here that slide in the bracket. I'll show you in a minute how it sits. So you get your bracket with the outer pad on and it just goes in here. And when I say it just goes, it make, make it sound simple, but it's a bit tricky to do this. I'm gonna rub it over again. This is how it sits in the bracket. You have to slide it in. Hope the camera shows. And there it is. Now everything is in position. And now you take the long bolt and install it in here. Don't tighten it yet. So does it start? Yes, it does. Now we can move the inner pad back and open up the gap between. No, no, pretty hard to show on camera, so we can slide the brake disc in. Get some brake clean on a paper towel. Now 
make sure that this bushing is in place on the brake side. Alright, oh, there we go. And there's this thick washer that goes in on the speedometer drive side. Now let's put this in. It's still looking great. There it is. The axle in. Give this a whirl and see if the speedometer is working. And it is. You can put the brake caliper on. Tighten everything. First, do everything hand tied. I'll target down to 22 and a half. As always, highly recommended a fan boot torque wrench quarter wrench drive. For this kind of work where you get steel bolts and aluminium, like in the engine cases, and you can wreak havoc if you over tighten them, it's so nice to have a thing like this. Always use it to measure breakout torque, so highly recommended. I'll leave the link in the description. So you can complain about the quality of those bikes, but they have these nice rubber caps on all bolt heads, both front and rear axle. I lost one, I ordered a new one, two euros, so that gives me peace of mind. So this is done, I'm gonna ride I think 100 kilometers and then check if everything is still torque to spec, retighten them and then I'm gonna mark it off with a marker to as a mental note that I torque them to spec. Anyway, now on to the rear axle and I'm going to replace the rear bearings. Get out those caps. First you want to lose the chain tensioners. That one. It's a 19 and a 17 mil. Now you can unhook the chain in many ways, but um, oh, I lost the bolt. And take the front sprocket off. There we are. A lot of parts falling out. Move the chain. There it is, and now I have the rear wheel out. So there it is. I'm gonna remove the sprocket over there, and then I should be able to tap the bearings out. So here is one of the old bearings coming from the front wheel. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up. 6301-2RS, and that 2RS, that 2 means it's sealed on both sides. So here have your seal. And this is what it looks like on the inside. There is no seal and there never has been a seal. And there's almost a millimeter of sideways play in this bearing. So that's shot and this is the good one. So I'm gonna check the bearing in here. Let's slip it over. Yeah, this is a different size. This is a, yeah, it's a different size bearing. Um, so I don't have the right ones, but I can inspect it, and this one feels much better. There is some rust in here, but it's not bad. That rust comes from the axle, but there is no play on this bearing. I hope it's the same on the other side. Let's turn it around. And that one is pretty nice and good too. I want to wipe it down. A little bit of loop on the lip of the seal. But this actually feels pretty good and I'm happy with that and it's a good thing we're inspecting it because now we know have, we have the right bearing size. It's a 6302RS and it's a larger size than on the front, significantly larger by the put way. put the sprocket back on to do two things. I have my pack of grease over here put some grease on the lip of this seal over here and then we have those pins that go in there where the sprocket is mounted upon a little bit of grease get water water usually gets in here 
washing and when you're driving through rain and these can really get seized up and we can prevent it by putting a little bit of grease on there and it's one of those things where I say if you it's worth taking it off it's worth cleaning it if it's a customer job they can see you had it pulled off so that goes on there Center. I think like the tension of the chain, maybe a bit more on this side, a little bit less on that side. Looks pretty nice to me. This really is the tiniest amount of Podolin chain loop, but do that every thousand kilometers and the chain will last you a long time okay okay folks Arnold from the future here um, I need to point out one thing if you want to replace the brake pads only there's one thing you can do and it's more convenient remove this plastic cover this plastic cover over here that covers this bolt loosen this bolt and then you can tilt this entire assembly forward and then pull it off of its guide pin the mounting bracket stays on the front fork and you can then easily replace the the brake pads that's the easiest way to just replace the brake pads new pads go in slide the bracket back on back over and bolt everything back up now back to the regular program so there she is and after all that maintenance it's time for a third test drive i need to check if the brakes are working correctly if the chain tension is right but in all honesty it's almost a week later and i already did 500 kilometers on the bike um, one thing that i needed to adjust was the chain tension and i noticed that the front brake rotor seems to be a bit wobbly now that could be the case that the rotor is warped but this one is new but I don't expect that to be the case so what I suspect is happening is that the paint on the centerpiece is too thick so what I want to do but I'm gonna do that off camera is remove the paint on the rear because I can see it's on very thick and when I brake when I pull the brake lever I can feel it slightly warp braking performance is good by the way and well as you can see it got a little bit dirty and I've done so many kilometers since the last oil change that it is now time for an oil change but that is something I'm going to do off camera anyway I uh, hope you liked following me along and I hope you learned something from this I'll keep you updated on the MASH 50 in future episodes and for now I would like to thank you for watching bye